Hey everybody, Mike Slifer here in the First Alert Forecast Center. We have another First Alert weather extra for you. We have a lot to talk about in the tropics. We have an additional First Alert weather day later this week. Plus, we'll give you an overview of where things have been as we approach the halfway point of August. Hard to believe that ha that happens this week. So uh, let's jump right into the tropics. Now, the uh, there are a couple of spots being monitored right now. There's one by the Yucatan Peninsula that has a low chance of formation, and there's one uh, out off the coast of New England, that is a low chance of formation too. But the big story in the tropics is certainly Tropical Storm Aaron. It has maximum sustained winds right now of 45 miles per hour with a central pressure of 1,006 millibars. It's moving west at 22 miles an hour, which actually is a pretty, a pretty quick forward speed. But it's expected to slow down. And as it slows down, approaches the Lesser Antilles, we will see it uh, strengthen further, forecast to become a hurricane uh, either late tomorrow night or early Friday morning, and it will continue strengthening through the weekend. So by Sunday afternoon, we're expecting it to be the first major hurricane of the Atlantic season. After this, we're anticipating a curve to the north, but there are a couple of different scenarios that could be at play here. It all depends on the placement and uh, strength of high pressure. Stronger high pressure that's a little bit farther west, uh, a little closer to, say, Bermuda, will push the storm forward farther to the west and make it approach the east coast of the United States. Uh, so the storm would take that curve and steer north a little bit later. However, if high pressure is out to sea a little bit more, if it's a little bit farther to the east, then the storm will uh, turn north. <laughs> Let's try that again, turn north sooner. And uh, that's when we would see a scenario where perhaps it would be more impactful to Bermuda, but we wouldn't really see any impact throughout the United States. Either way, we could be dealing with some rough surf, especially toward the middle of next week. So we'll be watching this very closely. We will be the first to alert you when it becomes a hurricane and uh, if there's going to be any impact to any part of the U.S. Next name on the list after this is Fernand and then Gabrielle. But we don't really see anything uh, coming up the pipe behind this at least too quickly. So we, of course, will keep watch on the tropics as we get later into the Atlantic hurricane season, which peaks on September 10th. First Lord 7-day forecast shows two First Lord weather days, tomorrow and Thursday. Hot and humid again tomorrow, storms late, humid with scattered storms on Thursday. Uh, more isolated in nature tomorrow compared to those on Thursday, so not quite as much of an impact. Temperatures down a bit on Friday, plenty of sunshine, less humidity, looking great Saturday. By Sunday, perhaps we're muggy and we might see some isolated storms. We'll be watching that very closely. But Monday and Tuesday, temperatures will be trending downward. And uh, we're going to focus a little bit more on that longer term forecast coming up here in uh, just a few minutes, but we want to take you through the day tomorrow first. As temperatures climb back up to near 90 degrees through the afternoon hours, the rain icon starting to appear tomorrow evening. If you want to head to the beach, highs will range from about 80 to 90 degrees. High tide tomorrow is in the early afternoon. Great time for swimming. UP index is 7, so make sure you grab the sunscreen. It's going to feel a bit hotter out there tomorrow. Heat index value is about 90 to 95 degrees, and we'll take you through the timing on any showers and storms. Fog in the morning will start to mix out. As it does so, we will see increasing sunshine, and there may be some isolated development through the afternoon, but especially as we get into the evening. That's when we expect some of the greatest impacts uh, when it comes to storm chances and rain chances, all of this winding down by 11 o'clock tomorrow evening. So we will start to see things uh, improve once we lose our daytime heating. We didn't have great air quality out there today, and unfortunately, these orange dots are popping up again tomorrow. So sensitive groups, people with pre-existing conditions will have to try to limit uh, strenuous outdoor activity, limit time outside during the day, too. Now, tomorrow is a first alert weather day because of the heat, humidity, and the isolated storms. Thursday, a first alert weather day is we're still hot, we're still humid. Scattered storms becoming more likely. We'll take you through the timeline on Thursday. Showers and storms popping up as early as the mid to late morning hours, continuing through lunchtime. And not everybody will necessarily see rain this early, but we will see activity begin a little bit earlier on Thursday, continuing uh, into the afternoon and evening hours. And some of these showers could be rather heavy. We, of course, will be watching uh, that very closely. Pardon me for one moment. I'm just going to step away from the microphone. All right, there we go. Just had to get a graphic here situated. So we don't want to focus too much necessarily on the numbers on this graphic, but rather the, uh, the difference in color on the contour. Some parts of the state by Friday morning will have seen very little rain, if any at all. Other parts 
maybe up to two inches, even a little bit higher. So the places where the downpours develop, and especially if they move through the same location a few times, will be the ones who win this battle. A boom and bust scenario, certainly. And we need the rain. As of today, our deficit for the Hartford area is up over an inch and a half for the month. We do still have a surplus of almost three inches, but we've been chipping away at that, and we will continue to do so. The new drought monitor gets released on Thursday morning. We'll be watching to see if there are any updates, but uh, we saw some updates last week with the expansion of the normally dry areas. So uh, unfortunately, that is certainly something that could possibly be seen again. Temperatures today topped out for many towns in the 90s, except for Groton, which only made it to 79, 84 in Norwich. Cool in southeastern Connecticut today compared to everybody else. But since we made it to 92 for the Hartford area, this is our second day in a row at or above 90. One more will make it an official heat wave. It'll be close. We're forecasting a high of 90 tomorrow, but we do think that uh, we could get there, especially before any of those showers or storms pop up. First alert, live radar scanning clear and dry out there. Nothing to track for you tonight except for a bit more in the way of uh, ground level ozone. Air quality is still not great in parts of the state. Here's a live look at our ICAM in Rocky Hill looking north to the Hartford skyline. That haziness that you see out there is the ground level ozone. Sensitive groups, uh, air quality is still an issue from Willington and Union all the way along the Massachusetts border to Salisbury, Sharon, and then down through New Milford, Candlewood into uh, Danbury and Newtown. So certainly not great out there. More of an improvement along the shoreline. We do expect improvements as the night goes on, and the air quality alert is still in effect across most of the state until 11 tonight. And there's a chance that we could again see another one issued for parts of Connecticut tomorrow. We'll be watching that very closely. Here's a live look on our ICAM in Hartford right now. Not much to track, 79 degrees. We'll take you live to Torrington. Quiet night in northwestern Connecticut. How about a live look in our ICAM and Waterway? This is atop the Mattituck Museum overlooking West Main Street and the Green. 74 in the Brass City right now. New London was the cool spot all day, currently 72. So things have evened out a bit. And we'll finish with a live look in our ICAM in New Haven. In the far distance, we can see the blue lights of the Pearl Harbor Memorial Bridge. It's a dry night across the state. Not much in the way of cloud cover at all. Temperatures have been dropping compared to where we were earlier. We're about, say, 75 to 80 in many towns, a little bit cooler through Chester, Norwich, Groton, even along the 395 corridor, Putnam coming in at 74 currently. Dew points along the shoreline are in the 70s, 60s inland. We're muggy on the cusp of humid. So it feels like a summer night outside. If you want to get out there and try to see some uh, shooting stars, the Perseids are peaking tonight. The best time is after midnight. Here's the thing. While we have a clear sky... We still have that waning gibbous moon. In other words, the moon is still closer to full, and uh, we have a lot of moonlight to battle, which means only the brightest meteors would be will be visible. Typically, when the Perseids peak, they uh, could be peaking at 50 to 100 meteors per hour. That will not be the case tonight because those less visible ones, those dimmer ones, will not be seen against the moonlight. If you were hoping to get out there uh, perhaps early tomorrow morning, you just may want to keep in mind that we're expecting fog to develop, patchy at uh, patchy coverage, that is. So visibility not great heading into the morning commute in some communities. Consider this your first alert. Things could be a bit slow going on the roads out there. And then we'll start to see the fog mix out, and we'll see improvements. The temperatures overnight will be between 65 and 70 inland with low 70s along the shoreline. We'll take it town by town tomorrow, 85 to 90 in the Litchfield Hills and across northwestern Connecticut. Through the greater Hartford area, we're expecting temperatures on either side of 90 with temperatures across northeastern Connecticut in the upper 80s. Another uh, hot day, especially when you factor in the humidity, feeling 5 or so degrees hotter than it is. Shoreline highs, 81 in Mystic, 82 in Niantic. Pajuit City and Salem are forecast to make it into the upper 80s near 90 throughout inland parts of Middlesex County, but along the shoreline from Old Saybrook through uh, Westbrook and Clinton and into Madison, New Haven County in the mid-80s. 89 tomorrow in Wallingford, 87 in Brantford, 87 in Milford, and 86 in Naugatuck. We're expecting temperatures uh, in the upper 80s to near 90 throughout Fairfield County, too. So here's the front that we'll be approaching, helping to uh, pop off some of those th showers and thunderstorms tomorrow. Again, more isolated in nature, favoring northwestern Connecticut. And then we'll see more scattered activity on Thursday as the front actually crosses. Since it's slow to cross, that means we're also slow to push the humidity out, which we will do. We see improvements for Friday especially. And uh, so far this month, temperatures have been mainly below average still. It's certainly been quite dry. With more heat on the way, we'll be adding to our 90-degree day tally. As of today, we're at 20 for the year. In a typical year, we do see 20. 
and uh, that means that compared to last year, we're still shy by seven. Here's a look at the last uh, several years. 2024, we had 27 days at or above 90, only 15 in 2023. And 2023 was an interesting year because the hottest day of the year happened in April. The second hottest day was in September. Uh, on 2022, in 2022, we had 29, 2021, 24. And in 2020, the record, 39 days at or above 90 for the Hartford area specifically. So we'll likely add to the tally tomorrow and then maybe again on Sunday. And look at those temperatures next week dropping. Some of our longer range models actually indicate by the middle of next week, we could see high temperatures in the 70s. The 8 to 14 day temperature outlook here showing those shades of blue popping up. So things could end up getting a bit cooler as we approach, say, mid to late August. That's our latest first alert weather extra. We hope you'll join us over on the wax in 20 minutes as we... Uh, dive into the forecast details, and then you can join Chief Meteorologist Mark Dixon tonight on Channel 3 at 11. He will have the latest update from Aaron, which uh, gets released right around uh, 11 o'clock tonight. And of course, we'll have another First Alert Weather, weather Extra tomorrow, streaming live on WFSB Plus at 8 a.m. Have a great night.